Yeah, you know, I've said before that the win the only winner in all of this partisan battle is the Russian intelligence service. But mm -hmm. but now I'm thinking about who the loser is. The loser is indeed the rule of law, our system of government, and that trust that's so crucial between the American people and law enforcement and its FBI. And so it's coming from the top. So we've had a president who, during his campaign, said he loved WikiLeaks. He called for the Russians to release hacked emails if they possessed them. He's fired an FBI director for doing his job. He's hinted displeasure at, at Attorney General Sessions because he recused himself properly from an investigation. So we're, we're getting our own version of the truth presented by our president. And that concept of raising your right hand on the witness stand and saying the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth is now becoming your own variation of the truth. And that goes directly toward attacking our system of law and order in this country. And, it, and now we have our own FBI director picked by Trump, who's literally between a rock and a hard place, Alex. Mm -hmm. if, he comes out, if he comes out this week, right, and he says, I'm going to rebut this Republican memo line for line, bullet for bullet, he's literally becoming that partisan political person that the FBI can't become. Be. So yeah. we're seeing our whole system of law and order being upended by this president. Yeah, and, and the way in which uh, Americans place their trust in the FBI can't quite get over the numbers that were released by Axios yesterday via SurveyMonkey poll. I mean, 47% of people say their trust in the FBI has been compromised. It's eroding and they don't trust them. That is shocking to me. You know, it's, it's something during my tenure in the FBI, we were so proud of the fact that very little um, recruiting and marketing needed to go, uh, needed to take place for the special agent position. There was something like 10,000 applicants for every one FBI wow. agent position. There's a, there was a junior G-man program that we'd proudly uh, present to schools and, and youth groups, right, where you'd get little junior G-man badges and you'd pledge not to go on drugs or lie or cheat mm -hmm. or steal. And, and now I have to wonder about those kids. I have to wonder about those recruits and what they're thinking and what's going on in their head and how that whole concept of justice has been eroded by a White House who's essentially looking out only for their own interests right now. Well, I want to I take a little deeper dive here and go into some details and, and listen to what former assistant FBI director for the New York office, Bill Gavin, said just in the last hour. And this is all about the FBI credibility. Take a listen. If, in fact, they recused or took out some information or didn't present some information or circularly reported information uh, in, this, uh, in the affidavit for the FISA court and somewhat deceived the FISA court, then I find that deplorable. And, and we have to find out who's, who's to blame. Look, Frank, he clearly thinks there were missteps by the FBI. Is there room to criticize the FBI? I mean, after all, it's a public institution. Oh, you bet. I'm, I'm all, all about oversight. The FBI represents the American people. Congress are the representatives of the American people. You're looking at someone who throughout his tenure as an FBI executive was on the Hill countless times briefing the oversight committees, House and Senate Intelligence, Judiciary, Homeland Security committees. They, they pay our salaries, they demand answers, and they deserve them. But what we're seeing here is not oversight. What we're seeing here is an outright attack. I call it friendly fire on the FBI for po political partisan reasons. And what Bill Galvin said in that clip, Alex, was that if, if FBI agents did this, that, or, or something else, then they need to be held accountable. And you bet they do. But I'm telling you right now, that Nunes memo, I, I've appeared in FISA court over 20 times in my career. Hmm. I've signed off on countless FISA applications and reviewed, I don't know, hundreds of FISA applications. So let's, j just this couple of points here. What are the Republicans saying about this FISA uh, application? Um, that they, they may not have told the court that this was a paid informant. Uh, FBI pays its informants. The, the court knows that. That, the, uh, that they didn't tell the, the judge, perhaps, that Christopher Steele was biased um, and wanted Trump out and didn't want him to be president. I've worked informants all my career, terrorists who are Shia reporting on, on the other side, um, uh, organized crime families reporting on the other family. Uh, I had a terrorist informant one time who simply wanted cash from a reward program. I really didn't care about what motivated them. I cared that it was vetted, that it was true, um, and that we could prove it. And hmm. that's what went into that memo. And you're going to hear in the, in the coming days, and particularly if the president 
has enough guts to sign off on a Democratic memo, you're going to see this memo rebutted, um, and you're going to hear that the FISA court judges knew what they needed to know. And so you've been in the FISA court, as you say, 20 times. You're trying to get FISA warrants extended. Where is the bar on doing that? How high is the bar to get it extended? They, I know that you have to be... You have to prove that you're getting information and that you expect to get more. It can't be that you're just buying time, right? I mean, if you've got nothing in the previous three months, you're not going to get an extension, right? Yeah, so the, the, the bar starts simply with, with, at zero, which is, has anything changed? Have you, have you had any new information that mm -hmm. actually is exculpatory that the judge needs to know about? Number two, what's the progress been in productivity? If you're showing no progress, no productivity, you've got to tell the judge that. And then, and then thirdly, what, what more information, new information, has come in to bolster your claim of probable cause? All of that goes on in these renewals. And this thing was renewed several times over the course of several judges who took a look at it, each time signing off on it. I'm going to have my director, Will, put up uh, part of an op-ed that was written by Special Agent Joss Campbell. And, and I want you just to, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar about it. This is a guy who's leaving the agency, and he says because he loves his country and he loves his badge and all that. Are you concerned about the morale within the FBI and more departures? I, I am concerned because, look, imagine coming to work every single day and you're CEO, right? So the, the, the president is kind of the CEO over all of the executive branch, and your CEO is showing evidence of not believing in you, attacking you every day, attacking your leadership, and ruining your perception in the public. Of course I'm concerned about morale. I'm even more concerned about the effectiveness of the FBI every day when they display their credentials in a kidnap case, a terrorism case, a bank robbery. They need an informant. They need help right now. And I'm, I'm worried that that citizen is going to just take a few seconds to process whether they should help or not. That's the real damage that's being done by the White House. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.